And there's one more thing we can do. We can actually color the results from Google. So let's see if I remember that correctly. All right, welcome back. I'm going to start today by showing you a way of using Google from the command line or from GHCI, which I find when I'm doing interactive development in GHCI to help speed things up a little bit. So fortunately, Google provides a command line program, which you can install from Cabal Install. And we ran into an error here, so let's see what that is. And it looks like for some reason Happy wasn't installed, so let's install that, which has to do with parsing. Okay, let's try again. Now, I suppose you could also use Cabal Dev to install Google if you didn't want all of those dependencies ending up in your user GHC packages. So now Google's installed, but you still need to download the data for it with Google Data. And finally, Google's ready to use. So let's try it out with a search for get args. And you can see the results here match what's in the web interface here. So using Google from the command line is all well and good, but I'd like to be able to use it from inside of GHCI. And one way to do this is to use the bang command here to run a shell command from inside GHCI. So let's try that. And aside from just searching for a function, you can also with Google using the info flag get the documentation for a function. And so this varies from the info you'd get inside of GHCI first, making sure you uh, have it in scope, which you don't have to worry about with Google. So you can see that the info here doesn't actually give you the Haddock documentation like Google does. So this is all well and good, but I don't want to have to type in uh, this line every time I want to use Google or have to remember exactly how it works. And fortunately, GHCI provides a def command which defines a new command. And the way it works is you provide it with a name. I'm just going to name it search to keep it unambiguous since Google can also give you documentation. And what you give it is an expression that returns a string, and that string is going to be evaluated by GHCI just as if you typed it at the prompt. To be more specific, it's actually an action in the IO monad that takes an argument, or, or technically one or more arguments, whatever you type out, but we'll just consider this a single argument for now. So what we want to do is return something like this with our argument here. And I'm going to write this in point freestyle just to keep it simple. And since we're in the IO monad, we need to return. So now, if we type search, it should have the same effect, and it does. But I don't want to have to type this in every time I start up GHCI. Fortunately, there is a .ghci file that you can use to put commands like this into that'll run every time you start GHCI. So let's add that here. And while we're at it, let's also define doc, which does the same thing, except we'll use info. And I'm going to change these to def with an exclamation mark, which just overrides any existing definition of the same name, just in case. And rather than restart GHCI to get these changes, you can just use script to load a 
file of commands like this. And I had to type in the whole path because GHCI won't do shell expansion like uh, if you tried to use a path like this. So let's see if that worked by checking doc. And it does. Now we could stop there, but you might want to do a more complicated search at some point using type signatures. Let's say you wanted to search for this type of a signature. Well, you'd get an error from the shell because we're passing things unescaped. So let's solve that by escaping the arguments. And we can find, uh, let's say, GHCI escape shell arc. Now, since this is run from inside GHCI, we need to use let because we can't just define top-level functions without it. And it'll take an argument. And we'll surround that arg with single quotes. And we need to escape any single quotes in the argument. So let's just say we're going to map a function over the characters of the string. And if the character is a single quote, we'll do something with it. Uh, otherwise, we can just return it. So what do we do with the single quote? Well, one way to, do, to take care of this in the shell is to close the single quoting we're doing, then to quote a single quote, and then start the single quoting again. And when we make this into a string, it's going to be a little bit confusing here, just because we have to escape that part. And we can't, this isn't going to be a valid function because here we're returning a string, here we're returning a character. So let's actually turn that into a string. And instead of using map, we'll use concat map. And then we should be able to concatenate this here. So if I've defined this correctly, we can just add it uh, into this string of code here, then reload the script and try that search again. And it worked. And there's one more thing we can do. We can actually color the results from Google. So let's see if I remember that correctly. Okay, so we've had some fun customizing our tools, but now it's time to continue work on the redo prototype. And if you look at DJB's page for Redo, there's not a lot in the way of specification. But the one thing that we can see, the first page here, and I can presume it's important, at least to DJB, is rebuilding target files atomically. And this is saying basically that instead of rebuilding the file directly, let's take a look at our redo.do file. Instead of allowing GHC to write to the redo file directly, we should first be writing it to a temporary file, this um, dash 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 redoing file. And then we should move that file in place, which should be an atomic operation, to make sure that if the redo file shows up, then the building process completed successfully and fully. Now, DJB says that there's two ways to do this. One is to capture standard output for the redo script and write that to the file. The second is to provide the script with the file name as the third argument for cases where this wouldn't work. And I'd like to show you that that's actually going to be the case with GHC. If you take a look at trying to output to dev standard out, for example, with compiling redo.hs, you'll get a failure that there was an illegal seek. And so presumably the linker is trying to rewind the file pointer here. And since standard out doesn't allow for rewinds, it just allows for appends, we're going to have a problem. So let's see if we can implement both of these in our script. The first thing we want to do is define the temporary file name here, and we can just Let's just call that temp for now, and it'll be target. Uh, and just like we saw on the page here, dash, 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 redoing. And then we need to do two things. One, we need to redirect the standard output of 
the script to this temporary file. And next, we need to provide the second, I'm sorry, the third argument as the temporary file name. And we'll just fill in the first and second arguments here with a dash since we don't know what those are going to be yet. And finally, we're going to need to rename the temporary file once this has completed. And we could do that by calling out to the shell again and using move, but there's probably an easier way directly inside of Haskell. So let's take a look and see if we can use what we just built here with the search function and see if there's something that renames a file. And rename file looks like a good candidate. It's part of system.directory. So uh, system.directory rename file. And we can call it here. It uh, operates in the IO monad, takes a file path, it takes two file paths. The first file path, which is going to be our temporary one, and the second, which will be our target. Now, one other thing that we'll want to do is make sure that the process actually completed successfully and gave us a successful exit code before renaming the file. But for now, let's just try compiling what we have here. So first, we're going to need to rebuild redo manually because the script is going to change here. So let's go ahead and run the command manually. And next, we'll need to update the redo script to output to the third argument for the script. And so now let's go ahead and see what happens when we run redo redo. And let's check the date and the timestamp and it just rebuilt. So it appears to be working properly now. There's a couple things we should do to clean this up. First, we should make sure that GHC isn't outputting anything on standard output, which it is right now, and it still happens to be working. So let's test very quickly. Uh, so normal GHC run of redo gives us this output. If we set verbosity to zero, we get no output, so let's use that. And also, we should be checking the exit code of this process and not renaming the file if there was an error. So let's look at the documentation for wait for process. And what we get is an exit code. And it's not in scope. We could check the documentation inside of Google again. It doesn't give us the exact details. So let's try importing system.exit and then checking info on exit code. And now we can see that it's either exit success or exit failure. So we'll need a system exit code and to import the constructors, we can use that syntax there. So we'll get the exit here. And then what we can do is if the exit is exit success, We'll rename the file, and that has the return type we need already. If it is an exit failure, let's go ahead and capture the code. And we'll write out to standard error that the redo script exited with non-zero exit code and show the code. I'm probably going to need system.io for h put string line and standard error. And let's compile again. Oops. Wrong module name. And now what just happened here? It turns out we just ran into the case that we're trying to fix with this, where GHC didn't produce a valid executable. 
but we didn't check the exit code and so we ended up replacing redo with an empty file that we had set up. So I think we got this just in time. Let's go ahead and build it manually here and try again this time. And now let's intentionally do reintroduce, uh, reintroduce that error and see what happens this time. Notice that now instead of replacing redo with that empty file you see redo dash 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 redoing we instead printed out an error and left it as it is. And rather than leaving that temporary file around, let's go ahead and, if there is an error here, let's search the documentation for, or search Google for remove. And remove file is part of system.directory with rename file, which makes sense. And we will remove file on the temporary file. So let's recompile, redo one more time. And it looks good. And as usual, I'm going to commit these changes with a new tag to GitHub, but I don't think there's really any need for me to show you that every video. The prototype is still pretty basic and not very useful, but we'll be expanding it again in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.